So my wife came up and take up the uh, five. <coughs> Anybody want to bring them on the floor this morning? My Larry's coming up. Uh, Johnny, I do. I uh, I was at the dog store the other day, and literally, I didn't even I didn't even know this guy, but he just bought my stuff. I was sitting there talking to God, I'm like, well, I mean, if it's got to spend it, got to spend it, and uh, the guy just bought my stuff, and I, and I I just started talking, like, you know, I was just sitting here talking to God, and I was just kind of talking to him about God before I even asked him. I said, do you believe in God? He said, well, I hope so. I'm a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know that that. You know, I mean, I've had experiences with God, but that was that was one of those experiences, like whenever Jacob woke up from his dream and said, surely God was here. I, it was like, wow. I mean, that was a physical, man, a, like a, I don't know how to explain it. That was God. And I didn't know the man, he didn't know me, but he ended up, he's a pastor of Grace Baptist. He knows some people, he knows my neighbors. So we, we found some common ground, well, of course, common ground in Christ, but that's God. I mean, I mean, I've never had that's I've never had that ex experience before, and that was just like it's just like God solidifies your faith one by one by one. It, it, that, I mean, that was incredible. I mean, I really got to brag on God for that. I mean, there is no human explanation for something like that. Nothing. It's <laughs> Dear Lord, we just want to thank you once again for this beautiful day that you've given us for being with us in the service this far this morning, Lord. We just thank you for our Sunday school hour. And as we pause now to lift this offering, Lord, we just pray that you give for the ability of thy kingdom. We just bless those that have to give, those that have not. Yeah. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, yeah. 
I have two. Uh, my son Brandon, they're waiting on the insurance. He will be scheduled for two surgeries on his back probably within the next two weeks. And uh, a tech I worked with, she lost her son due to suicide, mm -hmm. 25 years old. We were prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Remember this request. Somebody else. I remember the loss of a family member of the wife. They found out he had cancer being a brother. Yes, remember these. I remember me and my family. Remember Cheryl, she's been having a lot of stomach pain the last couple of days. Just to keep her in there forever. Remember our pastor and his family. Mm -hmm. Pray for all those that are battling his own cancer. Yes. Don't forget to pray for one another. Remember these requests. Somebody else this morning. John, go ahead. Remember my daughter, uh, she was in the hospital for two weeks. I was up there with her, and she had pneumonia in one lung, and then she got blood clots in the other one. And because she's home, uh, she seems like she can't get her strength back, so her name's Belinda, so please pray for her. Okay, let's remember this request. Continue to remember Jerry and Jeremy, and remember my niece, Angie. Uh, she's having a lot of, they're having a lot of issues with her treatments for her cancer. Remember this request. Somebody else. My daughter-in-law's husband, they've taken him to Riverside this morning. Uh, her dad. Her dad. Yeah. Son Perry, remember him. They believe he had a heart attack. Okay, just remember with this request. Charlie does not feel good either. We need to keep Charlie in our prayer and lift him up. You have got two more chemos. Let's pray God takes care of this. We don't have to worry about no more. Amen. Somebody else. Keep remembering Brenda. She's really doing good. She had to have a two foot back hand. But so she's hoping to get a heart done this week. Yeah. Everybody knows okay. And I got a praise report. Her husband got saved Tuesday. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. People to death. He's an alcoholic. And he's yeah. just a Amen. pastor was going to come to him and her. 95 year old dad after he's got a glass eye and can't ride. Yeah. But I just want to remember him and praise God and answer prayer. She said, Whatever it takes, it was worth all the pain. That's right. Amen. 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 She said, Thank everybody for the prayer. She didn't know yet, but she said she knows God was great. And he's a marvelous. And he, she was a walking miracle. Yeah. When she gets out, gets back in church, she's one of those people who knows she's a walking miracle. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Remember, um, Tiffany Agnes. Um, Family, little girl that used to come with me. It's her mom's sister. They found her with Fred. Yeah. With Fred. And uh, they hadn't seen her heard from her for about a month. She decided I'll jail her in prison. Why don't I'm not sure which. And they're going to all talk to you on her. Remember, remember uh, Margie Houston's family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember Paulette Gordon's family. Her at least passed away. Yeah. Okay. Remember those requests. Remember me and my family. Remember Dad. Yes. Remember this request. Brother John, uh, my daughter Jeanette is on her way home. She's probably about almost half, halfway. You know it not. <laughs> anyway, she's on her way home. She left at six o'clock this morning, so pray that God will take care of her. I know he will. Yes. Amen. Remember this request. Somebody else. Johnny, you remember my family. Okay. Remember this request. Let's not forget all the ones in the nursing homes and the hospitals and the shut-ins. Remember a youth group. Oh, Tony, speaking of the youth group, I'd, I'd like to have a bake sale. If, I, if we could, if we could get some people involved in that, if we could get some goods baked, stuff to sell. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something you can make, hopefully something edible. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for itself. Because I mean, well, 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 when do I want them? I'll let you guys know the date, but just pretend we're having it in an hour. So, everybody get ready, because honestly guys, our youth is very important, and the youth dying, and I don't like to sit on my hands. I mean, yes, it takes God to build a church, but if we're God's hands and feet, we got to get our hammers and nails out, you know? Right. And God will provide, but you got to move your legs. Mm -hmm. faith, I, faith without works is dead, and, and we have to work. We have the faith, 
but we have to work to right. make that. So if anybody can help get involved in that, let's do a car wash, some bake sales, and let's get funds going and do stuff for the youth and build the church. I mean, that's, that's my burden for the church. I love this church. And ultimately, it's not just for the church, it's for souls, because there are people going to hell. And I mean, there are people my age right now dying and going to hell. I mean, think, think about that. 21 years old. This is... Don't I like that? It's a church member, Matthew. Okay, remember this request. Anybody else this morning? My brother, my aunt. Remember this request. Remember Larry as well. Okay. He's done a little bit better today. So remember this request. Pray for uh, my sister Katie um, and her soon to be ex husband or whatever, Jeremy, pray for him. And I had a, a, I have a friend who was in an accident like two weeks ago, and he was driving the EMS, and his partner was with a patient in the back, and a drunk hit him from behind 85 miles an hour. So he's out of work for a long time, and he's not allowed to talk about the other two, so I don't even know how they would do it. Um, you just pray for me. I've been... I fell last month around Bible school time, and I fell again this week, so pray for me. Do you remember these requests? That's all we got. Everybody turn to uh, 505 in your hymn books.
Has anybody got a song or testimony for us this morning? Amen. Bless you, brother. Somebody else. It's good to be here this morning, brother John. Amen. Uh, thankful that when he went away, he didn't leave us comfortable. He said, "Take comfort to you with us, my friends." That's right. Thank him for living with them all. I know that I know that all's well with my soul. I just praise him for that. Thank Amen. Peace that I have. Amen. Bless you, brother. Yeah, yesterday we went to Carrie's birthday party and there was... <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> uh, and uh, Carrie's mama was there and she was my Sunday school teacher when I was younger, lots younger. I was trying to figure out how old she is and I don't, I don't have a clue, but <laughs> I mean... And I was telling, I think it was Gary, I was telling about she used to come and pick us up in her 55 Ford Fairlane and take us to Sunday school class parties. We always went to their house out there on, we has, yeah, I mean, we always had really good times. And we may not have done anything, but just been there and we played games and we had a little bit to eat. But the Lord was there with us and she taught, him, you know, she taught a lot of stuff, you know, to me that I've carried down. Me, my mom and dad taught me a lot, but there's a lot of things that she taught me too. And uh, I'm thankful for people that do that. And hopefully, I make an impression on some of these young people sometime. That, uh, I just love the Lord. Remember in your prayers. <laughs> and I'm not sure this is the right side, so it might be a little high. <laughs> might be a little low. <laughs> I can't remember what side I sang it on. <laughs> I thought Larry had it marked, but it'll be just right. <laughs> just candles too. <laughs> so blessed. It took her a while. She thought it was a trip candles, I think, because she said they won't go. I suggest her go, but she did blow them out all by herself. And all the leeches was there. Now yeah. I, brought, I thought too the same thing you thought yep. back years ago. Mom is almost 90 years old, Mom yep. said. There was all the family. There was Mommy's kids, all their kids, and all their kids. And I'll tell you, it was a blessing. Uh, there was a few that never wasn't able to come, but there was just so many that was there that you just, 
it was just over in the blink of an eye. But I am, thank the Lord how blessed I am to have the parents and everyone in our family. And Derek, he's just grown so close to the Lord mm -hmm. and had a sermon. Just everything. I am just so blessed from the Lord. Amen. Somebody else got testimony this morning. You know, brother, I want to thank the Lord this morning. You know, the Lord takes care of us. You know, thank God that He takes care of me. And, you know, He guides me and trusts me, and He puts me in a place. You know, at times that He wants me to be at. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for instance, uh, I'm a construction worker. I work for different companies at times. And, you know, sometimes uh, the Lord may be dealing with the soul. You know, and uh, I try to let people know that I'm a Christian. You know, I don't uh, right. that back. I uh, let them know that you know I believe in God and and how. Uh, God is, it was God to save my soul, you know, and, uh, you know, sometimes when I do this, you know, some people, you know, they talk back to me and say, yeah, like, uh, when I was talking to him the other day, his, his mom was a Christian, he said, yeah, he said, my mom's a, a strong Christian, she's been after me to go to church, you know, <laughs> and uh, I said, well, that's a good thing, you know, we got talking about it, you know, I just got the witness to him, to him about the Lord, and, uh, you know, it's, you know, maybe the Lord's dealing with his soul, I don't know, but maybe he is, and, there's others on the job that I'm on now that, you know, I've got to talk to about the Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. and I appreciate it, you know, that I can be uh, helped to the Lord in, in yeah. doing these things, yeah. you know, and that He right. puts me where He wants me to be at. And, but there's sometimes on jobs, I'm on other jobs, that you cannot, you cannot witness to nobody, mm -hmm. you know, because they're disrespectful, curse, mm -hmm. and, you know, they don't want to hear it. But I thank God, you know, God lets me know when it's time to, to talk to a person, to witness to that person, that He wants me to speak to. Praise the Lord, Bless you, brother. Jasper Walls and Bright Golden Avenue As you behold all its beauty and its splendor Remember there's just one of you Look for me For I will be there too I realize when
Everybody else got a song or testimony this morning. Brother John, I want to testify how good God is to me. Amen. You know, I don't deserve anything He does for me. And I, but God is always faithful. Now, there's been a few times in my life I have been too faithful to God. Mm -hmm. I just appreciate the Lord and what He does for me. I appreciate uh, my kids are throwing that party for me yesterday. What a blessing it was to see all those people <laughs> wishing me a happy birthday. Yes. And so many wrote that they loved me. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't buy that in any store. That's right. I just love the Lord. I love what He does for me. I just, uh, I just want to keep serving him until I'm seeing face to face. Amen. Bless you, sister. Somebody else. You can testify while she's coming up here. Johnny Mother did say yesterday. When I turn a hundred, you just don't need to throw a party. <laughs> Jeannie told her housewife, if you're a hundred, we're seeing you on a cruise. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to have that put in writing. Well, there you go. <laughs> Better get that. I've had many tears and sorrows I've had questions for tomorrow There have been times I didn't know Right from wrong But in every situation God gave blessed consolation That my trials come To only make me strong Trust in Jesus, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. I've been to lots of places. And I've seen a lot of faces There have been times i felt so all alone But in my lonely hours Yes, those long, precious, lonely hours Jesus let me know that I was His own Trust in Jesus, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. I thank God for the mountains And I thank Him for the valleys I thank Him for the storms He brought me through For if I'd never had a problem I wouldn't know that He could solve them I'd never know what faith in God could do i 
Jesus, I've learned to trust in God. Yes, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Very sick, and you're 
the weapon, I've got stitches in you. And she said, Dale, you know, I don't understand. And he said, well, we're going to try to put the tube in. And she said, Judy, when they took me in there, they gave me something to put me out. I said, I was wide awake. That it's just like God took the lid up of my heart and said, I'm with you, Brenda. Don't be afraid. This is going to be over in no time. Mm -hmm. She said, it's just like they put that tube in the side of her, and it went in, and it was over with in two minutes. And she came back to the room before I got there. And uh, she was sleeping, said she woke up, said she just felt standing like an angel was around her. And said, it's time to wake up now. Your friend Judy's here. So I sent her some songs. And I'm a very good singer, and she said, I'm just so happy. He said, I, I want to I wanna sing a song, but said, I don't have the voice. And said, would you sing a song for me? I said, well, I'll try. And she said, go ahead and do it. So it's just me and her, and the nurses came in and said, is everything all right? So she said, yeah, so we're just having a good hallelujah service here. <laughs> she said, honey, that's all right. She said, you're a walking miracle. And said, I'm not a Christian, but said, I tell you, I've been taking care of you ever since you've been here. And said, you're a light to my life. And said, that girl there, I don't know her, but said, she always comes to see you, and she always has a smile. And said, she has to be a Christian to have God in her heart. And said, me and the nurses was talking about her last week, and said, we hadn't seen her for a while. And I said, no, I haven't been up for a while a week or two. Brenda said, you know, I had to get sick just to have her to come. And said, I pray, God, send Judy to me. I need her, because she understands me. And I've been through that with a family member and stuff. And she said, well, say that. She's really a bright and shining star. And that's what I want to be, a bright and shining star. Amen. Even if it's too heavy mm -hmm. to open up his heart. Whatever God wants me to do, I want to be a walking star for him. That's right. Amen. Bless you, sis. Somebody else got testimony or song this morning? That's all you got. Stand while we call the pastor. Unless you go sing, you won't be forever, right? <laughs> Genesis chapter twenty five. Genesis chapter 25. I don't know uh, what God's got in store. All I know this is what God's laid on my heart. And that's what I'll give you this morning. I can only give what He gives. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 25 and verse 25. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. Lord Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we exalt you, Lord. And I pray for a few minutes this morning. God, you would feed us from your table this morning. We thank you for the songs, for the testimonies, for our Sunday school lesson. God, that you gave us this morning. The Lord, as we look into the perfect law of liberty, God, you would feed our souls, enlighten our hearts and our minds, we pray. In Jesus' name, and amen. You may be seated this morning. Genesis 25. Huh? 25 verse 5. 25 verse 5. Did I say 25-25? I apologize. 25 verse 5, And Abraham gave to all that he had unto Isaac. And you might look at me this morning and say, Preacher, what in the world are you going to preach of out of that? <laughs> and Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. Now, we live in a world today where we're always talking about our rich uncles getting out of the poorhouse. Amen? <laughs> we're always waiting on the inheritance. I begin to think about the inheritance and what it means first to be an inheritor. First, it means that we have lost something. Amen? And I, in order for Isaac, now, I, I under, while Isaac was alive or while Abraham was alive, he had access to everything that the father had. When that father died, he became a sole heir. The scripture on down tells us that he gave gifts unto the sons of the concubines 
and he sent them all away, but everything else that he had went on right down to Isaac. And I begin to think, what are some of the things today that Isaac began to inherit from Abraham? Now I know and you know today that the scripture tells us that he was rich. Not just rich, but very rich. When I think of Isaac and think of Abraham, I believe we can compare. Uh, and uh, I realize today that, that Isaac was considered the firstborn son of the beloved wife, uh, as this was, or the firstborn son, really, period, uh, because he was the only son of the wife and not the son of the concubines. And uh, we can kind of compare that just a little bit to Abraham being God the Father and you and I being Isaac. Now I realize that the, the God that you and I serve today, the scripture tells us that he is everlasting. That he has no beginning and that he has no end. And you say, well preacher, for him to, for us, him, uh, for us to inherit what he would have, then he would have to die. Not necessarily. You remember the, uh, the parable or the story of the prodigal son? The prodigal son, he came to the father and he looked at the father and he said, uh, give me the portion of goods that belongs to me and, uh, and uh, that I may enjoy them now. And if, uh, he did so, he gave him his goods and we know the scripture said that he took what he inherited and he left and not many days after that and he went out and he wasted what he had. I begin to think about how that Abraham passed all this down to Isaac and had the struggles that Isaac began to go through. We have to understand that Abraham had a lot of respect by his neighbors. They knew he was a great prince. Abraham had won victories in battle in battle, and uh, had went out. And remember he, uh, when uh, Solomon and Gomorrah had been taken captive and locked and all that he had, he took 300 men. And he went out and he defeated the armies and recovered everything that they had. And as he come back, and uh, we know the story, the king of Salem met him there. Uh, but let's get back to Isaac. So uh, now Isaac, amen, his father is dead. All people know about Isaac is Isaac, the son of Abraham. Uh, he's always uh, uh, taken care of Isaac. He's always provided. He's always protected. And now all of a sudden, Abraham's gone. And so the people are around there. What do they begin to do, amen? They begin to go out and uh, they would stop up the way that Abraham, the things that Abraham had passed down. You see, in that land, water was worth a great price. It was a treasure. Hey Amen. Listen, to, uh, to be able to have the water for your cattle and the water for your household. I know and you know that somebody, uh, they tell us about seven days without water and you'll die. Uh, you can go so 40 days without food, uh, they say. But I want you to understand it seemed like that he is life-giving for us. They all all around him, his adversaries, the people that had known about his father, the victories that he had won. Now he found himself fighting those same battles. He found himself digging those same wells. You see, my friend, in this world today, Jesus said that we would have him in tribulation, but it did not stop there. He said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that everything that God the Father has today already belongs to you and I. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven to enjoy the things of God. We don't have to wait till we leave this wife. We can enjoy it here. And now, my friend, there's an inheritance. The scripture said that's incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away. I think the greatest inheritance that you and I have today is this old Bible that you and I follow as our golden rule of life. And if it's not your rule of life, I want to urge you today, amen, listen, the Bible tells me what God requires of you and I is to live justly and to walk humbly before our God today. Amen, if we'll do what's in this book, if we'll take the treasure 
the scripture. Amen. This thing called it a, a, a hidden treasure in earthen vessel today. As if we'll take the treasure that our Father has left us and we'll begin to invest it. Amen. Listen, not in our lives. Amen. But in the lives of those around us. You see, because the testimony that we have is not for you and I that is set on our seats. Amen. Listen, and just think about what where we've came from and where we are and where we're headed. But the testimony that God has given to you and I is to be a witness and to lie. Amen. To a lost and dying world that they may see that there is a God in heaven, that he is a just God and he will give people exactly what they deserve in the end. Amen. So we have a testimony that we are the sons of God. Amen. Listen, do you realize what great honor it is for you and I today to be called the son of the living God? I realize today there's a lot of gods in this world, but there's only one true God as far as my opinion is, as far as the scripture goes. Hey, listen, I realize there's statues around this world that people will bow down, people will bow down and to dead men that have lived. But can I tell you today, the God that I serve is the one that hung the sun and the moon and the stars. Amen. So we've got the scriptures and inheritance. We've got our testimony that we are the sons of the living God as inheritance. Amen. Listen, we've got battles. Amen. We're victories. Amen. Along with those battles, do you realize, amen, when he came in, you know what he did? He didn't grumble. He didn't complain. But he redug the wells. Can I tell you today, my friend, it seems like a lot of the things that our forefathers the founders, even of this church, amen, the things that they have started, it seems like that they're not of effect anymore. I'm telling you today, there are things we need to get back to. Amen, listen, that worked then and they'll work now. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, how long has it been since you invited somebody to church? How long has it been since you fasted and prayed? How long has it been that you went out of your way? Amen, to make sure that someone had what they needed. Oh, you saying, preacher, amen, that's not my job. Can I tell you today upon this earth, right now you are God's hands. You are God's eyes. You are God's feet. You are God's mouth speak. A mouthpiece today. I realize he speaks through the spirit and he speaks through the word. But I want you to understand the only way he speaks to a lost and dying world is through and by his children by their actions and by their deeds by the words that we say unto them I'm telling you my friend we've got to let the world know whose child we are amen listen and that we're not beggars down here amen I'm not poor I'm not saying if you go look at my bank account today amen listen you might scratch your head and walk away Amen, but can I tell you, I've got treasures unseen. Remember the song that Randy sung last week? Oh, it's not what you see that makes me a king. Hey, listen today, I'm telling you, I'm blessed beyond measure, amen, in this world today. I never in my life did I dream I'd have the material things that I have right now that God has blessed us with. But can I tell you today, hey, amen, listen, it doesn't hold a glimmer. Hey, amen, listen, the baby that it should to the world today. Why is it? Because my heart, hey, amen, longs to be in the presence of the Lord. And listen, this soul body I know is getting tired. Amen. It's getting weaker. It's not getting stronger. It's getting weaker. But can I tell you, my faith in the God that I serve is still unshakable. Amen. I know He will supply all of my needs according to His riches in glory, regardless of what they may be today. I know that Romans 8:31 is still in effect. What the God is for me, that no man or nothing or anything and no one can be against me because God is on our side. We have an inheritance today and we need to act like children of the king instead of running around acting like we've been orphaned by God. Sometimes we come in the house of God 
and we'll just sit here and we're quiet. And I know we can throw that out. Well, you know the best time to sow seed is when it's quiet. But where's the worship to our service? Where's the praise that He is worthy and that He is due? Amen. I want you to understand something today. If we don't praise Him, <laughs> there's a whole bank full of rocks out there that might start crying out. If we don't sing praises, if we don't testify to His goodness, amen, I want you to know today for me to testify is not to brag on how good I've been and where I've been and what I've done. My job is to brag on Him, the one that picked me up out of the miry pit of the clay, the one that washed me when I was black as coal. Amen, He made me white as snow. He took my sin away. Amen, listen, I'm telling you today, hey, listen, some of these ladies yesterday have we're talking about the different preachers that have come here and said that I'm better than all of them. I'm telling you today, amen, I'm not any better. I'm just different. Amen, everybody's different today. What makes us what we are is the calling of God that God has put on our life. Amen, I cannot be somebody that I'm not. I'm not saying I don't appreciate compliments. I don't appreciate votes of confidence. I thank God. Amen, it keeps you going. But can I tell you today, I've got one job and one job. Amen, listen, that's to uplift the king and to be the example as the shepherd of the flock and to teach and to preach the word of God uncompromised today. That's my inheritance. I can't answer for what yours is. I know what my job in is in is, is the church. Sometimes, I told someone this week, sometimes I feel like an utter failure. <laughs> Amen? I know my life. Come on. I know the thoughts the devil entertains in his head the things that the flesh battles, all the different things we could go right up down the line. But can I tell you, again, I've already inherited the victory. Greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. Amen. Listen, Jesus did not leave me alone. or you alone? He didn't leave us high and dry and say, I'm the way. Find it. Amen. But he said, I pray the Father and he'll send you another comforter and he shall lead you and guide you and teach you, lead you into all things concerning me. Can I tell you today, amen, listen, we need to get back to some fundamentals. Amen, listen, when we're praising and exalting God that the world may know. I realize last week we had a good service, had a tremendous service Sunday morning, had a good service Sunday night. Hey man, we come out here Wednesday night. Hey man, listen, it seemed like somebody had turned off the damper and the fire had went out. And we come out here this morning and we're awfully quiet. I don't know, listen, I realize today, hey man, there's more to church than shouting. But thank God when you've got victory, why can't you shout today? Hey man, I know. I know there's concerns. What good does it do? What, which one of us, the scripture said, can take by, by taking thought, can add one cubit to our stature? Was it, why do we worry about things we can't change? What we need to be concerned about are some things that we can. Amen? There's some people out there, you, do you realize this? They're dying lost. Dying lost. Amen? We... <laughs> testified this morning or, or gave prayer requests this morning of, of at least four different deaths, I believe that it was, a minimum of three. I can name them all right off the top of my head. What well, three that they were, but I think, thought that might have been a fourth one in there. But can I tell you today, amen, I always wonder, are they ready? Are they ready? Sissy talked about the young lady that come straight out of jail and disappeared. Nobody knows what it was. Now they found her dead. Amen. Another young lady had passed away this week, 46 years old. What happened was her liver completely quit. It was destroyed by drugs and by alcohol. Can I tell you today, amen, let me size it up like this. That's a wasted life. 
Can I tell you? But yet, uh, another lady, amen, this have lived to be 80 some years old, if I remember, it serves me correct. Amen. And far as I know, what I've been told left no testimony. Thought she had time when she got to purgatory to pray. Can I tell you, that's even more of a wasted life. Amen. Our job today, church, is to let people know. Amen. There's joy, unspeakable joy in being a Christian today. Again, I'm not saying there's not days I'm not discouraged. Maybe even weeks that I don't get discouraged. But can I tell you today, amen, there's always a song to sing. Amen. I was listening to a CD this week. There was a song came on. That song kind of stirred me up a little bit. And I thought, Lord, it'd be good if somebody would get up in this church and she'll start singing that song this weekend. Lo and behold, you know what song Sister Sue sung? Through it all. Can I tell you, through it all today, I found God faithful. I found God good through it all. Regardless of what's come my way, I realize today, man, storms arise in our life, but through it all, he's my shelter. He's my rock in a weary land. He's my bread when I'm hungry. He's my comforter. And then when I'm lonely and hurt, He's my peace. And then when the war is raging around me, I couldn't make it without him. Amen. How did you get all that, preacher? I inherited it. Why? How? I'm a child of the king. Amen. Amen. To the world, <laughs> I'm just the son of an old crippled up coal miner. They don't know my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. <laughs> they don't know that there's a rainbow round about the throne of God. I've been meditating a lot on that rainbow. And I've come to the conclusion that the rainbow doesn't go from this side to this side. Amen? Let me tell you how I think it goes. <laughs> I think it goes this way. With the light of God's love radiating, the glory of God radiating, the power of God radiating, all those different colors, I'm telling you today, hey amen, I don't serve a God in a little box. I listen at me today, I don't serve a God that's hanging on a cross. Amen. I serve one that hung on one. But can I tell you this? Brother Joe, he ain't there no more. I don't serve a God that's somewhere buried in an empty tomb. He might have been there for about three days. But can I tell you, he rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave, hell, and the keys. And he said, Behold, I'm alive forevermore. That's the God. That's what I inherited today. Amen, the great I am, not the great I was. I don't serve a God that's the old man upstairs. Amen, I serve the God that is the I am of I am's. Amen, when the Moses said, whom shall I say sent me? He said, you tell him I am that I am. What did that mean? Amen, I'll have all that you need to know. And if you know God today, that's all you need to know. He's enough. And not just enough, he's more than enough. Amen, listen, you'll never bankrupt heaven by receiving a blessing from God. You'll never bankrupt heaven. Amen, by having a prayer answered today. I'm telling you, brother, he's faithful. He said, you have not because you ask not. If we'll get on our face, church, and we'll beg and plead and ask God to build our church church, amen, and make ourselves available. I'm telling you, the gates of hell cannot stop what God has started, what God has blessed, what God has called, what God has anointed. Don't tell me today this church is going down, but we're heading up. Hallelujah today. You know the only thing that can stop this church is this church. <laughs> for if God be for you, <laughs> who could be against you? You say, well, you're the youth, 
the prayer meeting, the Sunday school. You can go right on down the line. <laughs> There's a verse that the Pentecostals like to use. But sometimes we Baptists want to bash on them for using it. But this is what it says. To speak those things as though they were, not as they are. So preacher, how's the church? Well, we're building. We're, it's growing. Preacher, how's the youth group looking? It's growing. You, you see, I keep saying, well, you know, it's dying. It's dying. It's dying. Let me say something. Hey, man, listen. Sometimes my wife's water plants out there hanging baskets, flower baskets I bought her, and then they look like they're dying. You know how I fix that? I water them things. Can I tell you today, amen, there's only one thing, or only, there's three things, amen, that will cause a plant to die. Number one, you put it in total darkness. Number two, you rot it from the water. Number three, you let things grow up around it and rob it of the things that it needs today. I'm just saying, if you're not growing, amen, either you need to get into the light or you need to get under the spirit. Out, and you need to get rid of some things. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's still good. Amen. You know, we all like, need to be like some of them big zucchinis I brought in there. <laughs> big and fat. I'm speaking spiritually now. Speaking spiritually. <laughs> Joe always says fat's worth thin as in fat's worth sad. <laughs> Them plants are all, absolutely, my zucchini plants are that tall. And I think, man, there got to be something down in there. You know how you find what's down in there? <laughs> you look. <laughs> well, I'm saying, what are you looking for today? What are you looking for? Are you looking for a closer walk? You see, preacher, I, I never was much one to shout. I, I've seen these people shout around this church, and man, it just it looks looks like they're having such a. Have you asked God to give you a running spell? Huh? Hey man, it thrilled me to death last week when God opened up the bucket on Randy and Randy took off around this church. Now I'm telling you, it thrills me when I see old Dave. Old Dave will throw that arm this way and that leg that way and holler, woo! It thrills me today. I say, pour it out of him, Lord. Amen. Amen. You see, not only it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, amen, the inheritance, all those things. And I tell you, we're like that prodigal, son, prodigal son's brother. Amen, we want to sit and pout. Amen, when everything belongs to us. He said, you never gave me a calf. You never made no celebration to me. I'm telling you, brother, whether you want to come in this church and shout, that's up to you. Amen, but don't get mad at them that want to come in here and holler, well, well, well. Praise the Lord and run or cry or wave at God. Oh, listen, if you can't get in the way, amen, don't block them that are. If you don't want to see people get saved, amen, don't hinder them that are trying to get somebody saved. You see, because if we're not getting people saved, we're failing our job. Come on. We need to be praying old time Holy Ghost conviction power down upon our people today. Hey Amen. I know a young lady this week complaining because she couldn't sleep. All I replied was, I'm praying for you. Hey Amen. Her mom all said, do you think it might be conviction? I'm telling you today, we need to pray that their beds are too hard, their covers are too short, their beans are too salty. Hey Amen. Listen, that nothing tastes good, that nothing sounds good. Hey Amen. Until they get Jesus in their life, I'm telling you, they can stay content and they'll go to hell but if we pray trouble upon them they'll begin to count up the call somewhere amen. Amen. amen had a mother tell me this week if, it, if this is what it takes to get my child saved amen pour it on him Lord 
Can I tell you today, amen, I'd rather see him go through some trouble down here, amen, listen and turn to God and get saved than what I would to see him live to be a hundred and be healthy as a horse every day, find sumptuously every day and slip off into a devil's hell. Amen, not only that, I'll tell you something about hell, it ain't eternal, brother. There's a lake of fire out there that's eternal and when they go there, there's no hope. There's hope right now. They're breathing. God can change that heart. Amen. Don't tell me. Ain't nobody too big. God can't bring him down. <laughs> or bring him up. We want them up in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because that's what he do. He'll bring them to their knees and then bring them up to a better life. If what we got ain't better than what we got ain't no good. And if the world don't want what we got, then we need to be looking at what we got. Brother Henry Eblen, dear friend, neighbor of mine, actually he's a he's our trash man. I'm telling you, he'll back hit old truck in there and get out singing or whistling for the Lord. But he sings a song that goes like this: I want the people to see Jesus in me. That ought to be our desire today. In everything we say, in everything we do, that is our inheritance to walk. Isaac could have just sat in his tent and said, I'm Abraham's son. Everybody owes me something. No. We can't sit in the tent. We can't sit in the church, amen, and expect the world come knocking, tearing down our door. We got to go ye into all the world. By the way, that's why I like supporting Brother Albert and these other missionaries that come here. Come on. That's part of the great commission that you and I, as you and I feel it, when we support them, we're fulfilling that. We've got to put some legs on our prayers. Some urgency. I'm telling you, if their house was on fire, you'd knock the door down to drag them out kicking and screaming if that's what it took. Amen. Amen. If the car rode over and laying on top of them, you'd become Superman to get that thing off of them. Come on now. You'd do everything you could to save them. Are we doing everything we could to save our children and our neighbors, our friends, our brothers, our sisters, Well, preacher, I, you know, I, I just don't want to offend anyone. Really? But you want them to go to hell? Well, that ain't what I said. I just don't want to make them mad at me. No, but you'd rather have them happy with you and go to hell than mad at you and go to heaven. Huh? Amen. We have an inheritance. We got duties. There's responsibilities with the inheritance that we have here and now. You know when the time to rest is? When we get to heaven. I realize there's going to be a lot of worship going on in heaven. I realize that. In the new heaven and the new earth, there'll be a lot of worship. I don't believe that all eternity will be just one worship service. You know why? Because when God made this world and He put Adam in the middle of that garden, guess what? Adam had a job. He had to dress the garden. There's going to be a brand new world coming, folks. Amen. Somebody going to have to take care of it. And I realize the scripture said that there's a tree of life on either side that by 12 manner of fruits, somebody going to have to pick them off. They just ain't going to roll off, you know, and go to everybody's house. Heaven is not going to be nothing like what we think it is. I'm just being honest. Our minds cannot fathom. Our minds cannot fathom. You know what? We, we think of things that we want there. I tell you what I want there. I want to see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost standing side by side. All in all. Amen. 
I don't want a body that don't ache. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand. If you need to pray this morning.